Hello, this video is mainly to talk about the KJV. Why use the King James Version of the Bible? What about the NIV or the NASB or even the New King James Version? Should I even use these versions with my walk with God, my spiritual growth? That's what I want to talk about. So without further ado, let us begin. This right here is a GeoCities Yahoo website uh, dedicated to showing the what they call errors in the King James Version of the Bible. Well, uh, let's read it and study it and uh, find out exactly what these errors uh, are. Uh, let's study it just like God said and uh, find out what's going on here. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 should read and the earth became without form the word translated was haya or heya and denotes the condition different from the former condition as in Genesis 1926 alright let's compare the two let's see what the King James Version says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now that doesn't seem hard to understand. I didn't need anyone to explain 17 minutes of non-related, non-relevant information or a translation. Even if my possible ADD filled brain, I think I can figure out the message. If you also include the verse before that one, which is also the absolute very first verse in the entire Bible, you get a more clearer picture of uh, what God was talking about. It says, Genesis 1 verse 1, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is letting you know that in the very beginning, not near the beginning or in the middle, in the beginning, the starting, this is basically when God created time, you know, God also shows us in the Bible the future when he puts a stop to time. Man, it's, it's such an amazing book, you know, it's worth reading. So God is giving us a time frame that before he was even done with the creation of the earth, that there was darkness and there was also water here on the planet before he even gave it a form. Now let's find out how it should be read. And the earth became without form. So the earth had a form at first, and then it became without form? It, it lost its form that it used to have? Now I can think of an angel, a fallen one, that would love for the Bible to say that. I mean, that just opens up the possibility of doctrines that could just be thrown at you if, if that was the um, case. Uh, co cozy, uh, cozy, uh, please allow me, if, if I may interject here, um, how, how can I explain this so that even you can understand? But uh, uh, Adam and Eve were not the first humanoids. This is obviously uh, not the first Earth. Uh, you see, prior to this Earth getting its new form, there was another Earth. Uh, it, it wasn't called Earth. It was it was called Dathgar. But besides that, um, there was it was ruled over by a, a another humanoid race. Uh, they, they were called the uh, Apomapatama. Uh, yes, the uh, Apomapatama. Uh, yes, but. Uh, they, they ruled over this this earth uh, for a totally made up uh, 17.8559 billion millennia. Uh, now, when when that planet uh, lost its form or yeah became without form, so to speak, all the Adamopotami they they died off, thus proving your Bible is being in uh, more of an error. Uh, see see uh, my. My Bible was better than yours. Your Bible specifically says there was no death before sin. Uh, I just proved to you that there was a death before sin. Uh, plus, I even know the name of the, of the, the race that, that was on the planet. Your Bible doesn't even say a thing about the Abel Uh So clearly, uh, my superior Bible, plus my intergalactic intellect, uh, it's just showing you that you, you really need to stop reading that old, out-of-date book. Now that's just a small example of the false doctrines that can arise uh, just by trying to change a word that uh, you think is in 
error or something that can better suit you. But moving on, uh, the next one has Genesis 10 verse 9 should read Nimrod the mighty hunter in place of or in opposition to the Lord. The word before is incorrect and gives the connotation that Nimrod was a good guy, which is false. Nimrod the mighty hunter in place of in opposition to was God against hunting or even hunters for that matter? Or was God a hunter himself? I mean, you say in place of. So the word before makes someone, or in this case Nimrod, a good guy? Or even appear to be being good? So if Satan stood or sat or appeared before the Lord, he is good? And what about Genesis 13:13? 13, 13? But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So the men of Sodom were good guys now. We are pretty good. You just need to get to know us a little better. I think a better definition for the word before would be was taken note of, or was noticed by, or gave attention to. That would make so much more sense than saying the word before means good guy, or good person. Okay, the next one, Leviticus 16, 8, 10, 26, in the King James Version is scapegoat, which today has the connotation of someone who is unjustly blamed for other sins. The Hebrew is Azazel, which means one removed or separated. The Azazel goal represents Satan, who is also no scapegoat. It says, who is no scapegoat. He is guilty of his part in our sins. Notice the author here is trying to use the King James Version's use of the word scapegoat with today's definition. He's not just trying to compare. He's trying to prove a book that was written hundreds upon hundreds of years ago wrong with today's definitions. Words like gay have changed meaning from being happy to being homosexual. And that's just in less than 30 years ago. Now I went and looked up the definition for the word Azazel. The word has given rise to many different views. Some Jewish interpreters regard it as being the name of a place 12 miles east of Jerusalem in the wilderness. Others take it to be the name of an evil spirit or even of Satan. It seems the word Azazel and its definitions are derived from other Bibles or scrolls. Now the King James doesn't use the word Azazel here. That's the Hebrew that you're thrown in there. I bet Satan would love for you to believe that it, he was used to bear our sins and sent off to separate from us to die in the wilderness along with our sins. The next one hits on the King James Deuteronomy 24 verse 1, which reads, When a man hath taken a wife, and marry her, and it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement. So what's the translation error? Deuteronomy 24.1 Then let him should be and he. As the Savior explained in Matthew 19, Moses did not command divorcement. This statute was regulating the permission of divorcement because of the hardness of their hearts. Notice the reason why divorcing is even possible now. The man found uncleanness in her. Now in the biblical days, women were considered unclean for a time just by going through their menses. I don't think any man would want to divorce his wife just because she is a woman. Perhaps she was unfaithful, but I took the time to look up what I could find on the word uncleanness. Morally impure, evil, vile. Notice it says found. I don't think he knew this beforehand. But this is what a normal person would come up with when they hear then lit him. The word being used sounds like as a result of or because of lit him, etc. But having the so-called Hebrew word added and he, that to me sounds like nothing new is added. This is just something that already goes on. So Moses is telling them what is already happening because of the hardness of their hearts? No, he's telling them new information that may now happen as a result of everyone's hard hearts. 